You're not gonna believe this, but here in New York City, where there are over 1 million public school students, over 10% of them are currently experiencing homelessness. That's 114,659 students. That's over 50,000 more students experiencing homelessness than there were in just 2010. To put that in perspective, there are more students experiencing homelessness in New York City than there are people in many other American cities. This is a full-blown crisis, but it's too often an invisible one. And for students like Khalil, becoming homeless has the potential to define the rest of their lives. You see, only 12% of students in shelters pass state math exams. It was, it was hard because the shelter didn't really have things that would help me do well in school. 62% of them are chronically absent, sometimes because their shelter is hours away from school. You want to see my alarms? I wake up at 3.59, then on top of that, I have a 5.30 alarm to wake me up while I'm on the train rides. They deal with feelings of shame and isolation from their peers. I definitely secluded myself. I made it almost my mission to seclude myself from everybody. And as a result, many students drop out, and many of those students end up incarcerated. Years ago, Khalil's family was displaced in Brooklyn, and he was on the track of so many other students who find themselves in shelters. It felt like I couldn't count on the people that was taking care of me. And I, I didn't really take in a positive attitude towards school at the time. But this downward spiral was stopped when Khalil was introduced to Simba, a program created by Department of Education employee Wayne Harris. He started this program when he read a disturbing report by the Department of Justice. Uh, they surveyed a group of adolescents on Rikers Island, and they saw that two-thirds of those adolescents reported being homeless uh, a year to 18 months before their incarceration. Wayne calls this a school-to-prison pipeline, and without seeing any adequate solutions out there, decided he was going to have to be the one to start his own. The solutions he created were Simba and Aset, two after-school and weekend programs designed to cater to the specific needs of students experiencing homelessness. These programs provide emotional and social support for students. They provide academic tutoring, school classes like the sociology of hip-hop, experiential classes like dance, chess, cooking, fencing, and even barbering. But more importantly, these students have a space where they're supported in a way that makes it clear their lives are important and worth fighting for. It creates a safe space where young people can support each other, deal with the fallout of being homeless. It's kind of corny, but it's almost like you ever watch um, lion cubs in the jungle? where it's like they're learning things from their parent, but they're also play fighting with each other to teach them skills later on. It's, it's almost like that. Like we have the freedom and will to play around with each other while we also focus on what's in front of us. And let's be clear, what's in front of them is a lot. The cards are stacked against these kids, but with programs like Simba and Aset, they also have the tools to handle whatever life throws at them. When people face problems, and any type of problem, whether you're like a homeless child or whatever problem you're facing in your life, there's only two things that people could do. You either rise above and tough it out, or you lay down and suffer. So Simba just teaches you how you can rise above. I'm Wayne. This, this is, is Simba. Simba. Rally on! Woo! All right. Yeah. Thank you. Nice. Yeah. Simba, it's too late. <laughs>